Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to uh, Becoming a Powerhouse, Becoming a Trading Powerhouse. Today, we will be talking about what it needs for everyone to become, for all traders to become a powerhouse. All right, so my name is Anka Metcalf, and I'm the CEO and founder of TradeOutLoud.com. Uh, I'm a professional independent trader that is focused on day trading futures in the power hour in the first two hours of the day and trading equities, actually swing trading and investing in stocks. I have been doing this very successfully for over 20 years. I have 10 years of investment banking and uh, I run a swing trading service for stocks and ETFs that literally was created in 2010. Before that, I was doing a lot of pro bono work as the market was collapsing due to the financial crisis. And uh, I was literally mentoring a lot of individuals on how they need to sit on their hands and actually buy more uh, to actually create more, um, to, to average out a better price for their investments and also uh, not to sell there uh th because you know when the market is dropping if you don't have you know the proper trading education you're panicking right so i also run a swing trading room for futures um since 2017 and by the way the track record for both of the rooms are on our website under the services tab uh, and you could see our performance for each and every single year, full transparencies with all the trades, the good trades, the bad trades, the home runs, the break-even trades, everything. We do offer trading education for swing trading and for day trading for stocks and for futures. And I am an expert in high-velocity trades. So what that means is that I focus on trades and I spot trades that are poised for a bigger room, for a lot of gains. So that means that I have the patient to wait for that setup. And this all happens in the power hour. And by the way, the performance that we have, I'm going to share with you the performance uh, that we have uh, into the trading room because we're going to be talking about income and becoming a powerhouse, an income powerhouse. So uh, basically, all the results are based only in the first hour, hour and a half of trading. So if you want to unglue yourself from the computer, if you want to eliminate the stress, you want to make sure that you uh, focus on high velocity trades. How do you get these high velocity trades? Well, basically, you have developed a proprietary institutional trading system to identify these velocity trades. It's not complicated. It may seem like a lot of mumbo jumbo, but it's not. Uh, basically, I'm looking at multiple layers of price support resistance. And when I see a uh, level that has two or three or more support levels that collide into the same area, and that means for a multiple time frames, indicators that are used, and I use very simple indicators. I use just some, uh, you know, just some moving averages that I'm going to share with you today. And volume, that's pretty much what I use. I don't use any kind of other uh, indicators that are going to clutter uh, my price action uh, chart. Uh, I also um, have specific trigger times. So these trigger times come from the um, aspect of the market, the context of the market. So how many times have you guys in here been in a trade and you got this perfect setup, you get into the trade, you put your entry, you put your stop, and you establish your target. The trade triggers for you, and at some point in time, the trade turns around. That is the most frustrating thing, right? And what happens is that it was not into a proper trigger time. It was the, not the right timing for the market. The market moves in sequences, and it moves in segments. I'm going to share all these segments with you and how it moves, because typically it starts moving from 9.30 to 9.45, 9.45 to 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock to 10.30, and then from 10.30 towards 11 o'clock, and then the momentum shifts. So we're going to touch about, upon these uh, trigger times within this presentation. I also look at specific uh, price zones, specific cluster zones. They're called fulcrums. This is something that institutional um, traders uh, look to scale in and out of trade. And I also look for chart synchronicity, chart synchronicity and divergency. Like, for example, this morning, um, we had like a very interesting formation into the market. We had relative strength into NASDAQ as we were heading into the New York trading session open. 
We had relative weakness in Russell, and we also had a much weaker chart as well in the Dow. The S&P was kind of flat. So automatically your attention shifts to NASDAQ because it's the most powerful, right? And then you need the power players to start jumping in. You know, your NVIDIA, uh, your uh, Apple, your Google, your Amazon. And if they continue higher, then NASDAQ is going to continue higher. Unfortunately, today, these uh, power player stocks have started to pull back and created weakness in NASDAQ. However, we did have some power players uh, that started moving higher in the Dow, and then the balance shifted in favor of the Dow. We're going to uh, talk about that a little bit later. So uh, bottom line, how many of you guys in here, let me ask you this, how many guys in here would love to generate income just by looking at the markets for about an hour, an hour and a half? Just type a one in the chat box. I would love to hear from you. And how many of guys would, uh, how many of you guys would you like, how many of you guys would like to actually supplement your current income without putting a lot of effort, without putting a lot of, you know, stress into the trading day? And how many of you guys would like literally to detach away from the computer and not be stuck every single day? Now you're talking to a person that was literally stuck to the computer for many, many years. And I mean like for about 15 years, not kidding you guys. Well, I started more than 20 years ago trading. 20 years ago, I started with day trading and I was literally glued to the computer. Why? Because I thought that the more I traded, the more I'm going to make. So I was very committed, right? That I mean, you, you got to give it to me. Like I was really committed. So I was literally in the market before the market opened, doing the analysis. Uh, and I was a stock trader back then. So I was doing the analysis, doing all the scanning, doing all the gap list, doing the continuation plays, everything that you need to uh, everything that you need to basically do before the market opens. And when the market opened, I was stocking for my particular setups. And it was great, but it was very, very, very tiring. It was very tiring, right? All right. Of course, everybody wants to make money. And here's the one thing that I, that you pointed out. And I think it's, you know, the number one thing that we have to, um, each and every single lot have, has to love. And you have to have the love for money. I mean, I love money. I love money. I love money. I love spending money. But here's the thing, because I love money so much, I'm not going to waste my money on really crappy setups. So I really want to get into a trade that can deliver to me a much better return. So you have to have the patience. If you love your money, you need to have the patience, develop the patience to wait for the setup. Because you know the saying, you have a setup, you have a trade. You don't have a setup, you don't have a trade. Because if you don't have a setup, what is a setup? This A setup is, for example, a pullback that happens into a, some kind of area of support within an ongoing trend, and then a rotation that is happening, whether an uptrend or a downtrend. Now, there's going to be within this system, within this pullback, there's going to be one candle that is going to be the decision candle. And you're going to buy it above and you're going to put the stop below. It's that simple. It's not overly complicated. And then by knowing the parameters of the trade, knowing the entry and knowing the stop, right, you are determining your risk because you cannot do anything in trading without having a measured risk. We're going to get to that. So basically, we have a lot of chaos that is happening in the Middle East. We it, This is the second year of the war in Ukraine. You have tensions in South China Sea. You have geopolitical risks that are rising around the globe, making it tougher traders to make the easy money. Because this is not an easy money market. You're having a very volatile market, yet many opportunities are still out there, right? And a lot of traders are still making a lot of money. So I've been talking to you guys about how I love money. I love to look for setups. I'm an extremely disciplined trader. I stock for one to three trades every single day, but that doesn't mean that if I allocate myself three trades, I'm literally gonna take three trades. No, I'm not. I am just gonna take that one trade that, <laughs> excuse me, fits my plan and fits my criteria. And if the market is, crappy or sideways or choppy, I'm not going to waste my money getting into it. So if I see that perfect setup, my velocity setup, I get into the trade. All right. 
So let's talk about income trading, right? Who doesn't like the extra income? This is my year. This is my 2023. And you can see here how I started from zero and went gradually to one, over 1 1.2 uh, million right, uh, right now. So this is how your learning curve should be. This is how your progression should be throughout the year. Very, very consistent. You can see my commissions from last year, like pretty impressive. Some traders would say, I would kill to have that kind of income or supplement the income every single year, right? And it's true. I actually paid commissions for that, right? Paid commissions for my trading. So this is only my commissions. This is the accumulated, uh, accumulative return. This is a snapshot from my portfolio. Uh, these are my losers, by the way, 461,000. These are my winners, 1.6. And uh, these are from longs, right? We're in a bullish market. Does everybody agree? Are we are we in a bullish market, everybody? I want to see here a yes or a one. Are we in a bullish market? Are we in a bullish market, everyone? Okay. So no shorting, right? So no shorting. So basically, we make our money to the long side. This is this is what uh, we're uh, we're focusing on. Do you see the shorts? We had very brief pullbacks going into last year. And these are the shorts that we had, 27,000 compared to the longs. So we were on the right side of the tape. So the methodology that I teach and what we do in our trading room teaches you to be on the right side of the trade, teaches you to be always in sync with the market momentum and always in sync with the power moves, always in sync with the institutions. Institutions meaning algorithms. Algorithms make up almost 90% of the market volume. We need to embrace them. There are only going to be more and more algorithms right now because institutional traders are not going to sit in front of their computers for an hour, an hour and a half day trading two-minute charts. What they do is they focus on macro time frames. They focus on um, investing. They focus on swing trading. They focus on whatever it is other than day trading. They have their machines. They gave their secret formulas to their machines and uh, their machines are trading. And by the way, the algorithms don't have such a fantastic uh, return. Why? Because they fail 40% of the time. That's right. They only make money. Uh, they only make, um, uh, they only make about, no, they, I'm sorry, the other way around. So the return for algorithms, so they suck about 60% of the time, but they make money 40% of the time. But because of their risk, uh, allocated and measure risk, they come out ahead. And that's why algos are really profitable for them. This is my year. So if you think that last year was a fluke, month after month after month after month after month, right? Because we haven't had a red month in forever, uh, literally forever. You can see the track record uh, from 2017 to literally present since we uh, in court, since we created the trading room and we haven't had losses. We haven't had a month of losses. So uh, that doesn't mean that you're not going to have losing days because there are losing days, but basically you need to have more green days than you have losing days. So for example, in January, you can see here that I had only two losing days. I had um, this losing day right here on the 12th and on the 23rd. And you can see here that on this particular Friday, I didn't take a trade. You could see here that on this particular Monday and this second Monday right here, I didn't take a trade, right? So you can see that there are moments when I do not take trades. Why is that? Because the momentum is not favorable for my strategy and for my trading plan. This right here is option expiration. I don't trade option expiration. In fact, I encourage my traders not to trade option expiration because the price action is not true to value. Uh, setups are poised uh, to um, uh, uh, fail. So a lot of stop outs can occur. However, I am in the room because I like to guide my traders. And if there's a trader in the room that wants to take a trade, I will highlight the trade setup. Again, there are no guarantees for that trade to literally trigger and follow through like it does in the rest of the rest of the week or rest of the month. I highly recommend that anybody that, and trust me, this is coming from my over 20 plus years of experience trading the market every single day. There hasn't been one day where I took off from the market. That's right. 
I had COVID like two years ago. I was trading through COVID like there was no tomorrow. I was trading. I always trade when I have a cold, when I'm sick, or whatever it happens. I trade. I'm in the market. This is my Zen zone. I love what I'm doing. And I love money. And it gives me a sense of like instant gratification when you're right and when you're making money. But when it comes to option expiration, I highly recommend people to think twice. You could set up a day off for yourself. Uh, you could run errands on that day. You could actually, if you feel compelled that you need to take a trade that day, trade with half the size or trade with quarter size. Trade with something that is not very significant, less than one R. So one R is my risk per trade. So this is my February, okay? Today is the sixth. We are in a trade. In fact, we're into the Dow right now. And I'm going to share with you the trade in just a second. But this is my, uh, this is the beginning of the month. This is Thursday. This is Friday. And this was yesterday. And today we're in the Dow long. So this is, you know, how the trading, how your PNL should look like, how your trading calendar should lo look like. All right, so why are we here? Because you want to hear from me how you can become a powerhouse through trading the power hour. So you want to trade for a living, you want to trade for a living, you basically don't want, you don't need a boss, you don't have a boss, you're your boss, you set up the rules, just like I did. For example, here, right, I said, I'm not going to be trading on option expiration and I'm not trading. I'm not trading FOMC days. Nobody's forcing me to trade. If you want to trade, go ahead, risk your own money. I don't care. It's not my account. It's not my money, but I'm not recommending trading in particular on those days. Um, no boss, no commute, no customers, no clients, no emails, just you and your trading computer. And I can teach you exactly how to do it, how to turn your computer into your personal ATM. So this is the perfect time to learn how to trade your way to financial freedom in 2024. The market is a permanent transfer of wealth from the novice trader to the astute and educated trader. Please don't take trading advice off social media or TikTok or Twitter or uh, you know, Facebook and those groups are, oh my God, I hear some horror stories. I have traders that are coming to us and say, oh, but I heard this on uh, TikTok and I heard this, somebody, somebody that has like 300,000 followers told me that, uh, you know, I should go long, uh, I should go long gold or I should go long or I could, sh I should sh be shorting the market. Oh my gosh, like last year, guys, it was like, I try to stay less and less on these social media platforms because the things that I was seeing there were like really bothering, really bothering. They were calling the top of the market last year in October and they kept on shorting and shorting. And I mean accounts that are hundreds and thousands of followers. <laughs> All right. So like I said, why will the mark why will the market remain volatile in 2024? Because it's an election year. We still have the Russia Ukraine. We have the Israeli uh, conflict. We have the FOMC that will continue to raise our stall rates. I don't know. Um, so inflation is still super high. We're not seeing any kind of changes. On I mean, I don't know about you guys, but when I go grocery shopping, like when I get out of Costco, like it's about three to four hundred dollars every single time. Uh, and when uh, you look in my cart, there's basically not much food in it, right? Um, massive layoff. Uh, layoffs will continue. Just look at the strength of the layoffs. There are going to be a lot of people that are going to be unemployed and that are unemployed. Uh, energy crisis is, are we still heading towards recession? Okay. So this presentation is for traders that want to create that in sync and power institutional money momentum uh, and want to build and create income and wealth. Um, for it's for traders who really and ready to, who are ready to eliminate frustration from their trading, who want to trade with clarity and literally stress free. I don't have any stress when I'm trading in the room. We have hundreds of traders in the trading room that can attest to that, and we're having actually a really good time. Uh, this presentation is all for traders who are ready to become consistent and eliminate the noise, be on the right side of the trade, and who are ready to learn a methodology that works for any asset. 
Because the thing is that once you learn how to trade a system, you can apply it to any asset, whether you want to trade Forex, whether you want to trade stocks, whether you want to, don't forget that I come with stock experience for over 25 years. And uh, you can trade anything on the planet, futures, anything. But for this, you need to have the education, discipline, patience, and focus. Like literally it takes the doctor, a lawyer, pilot, or engineer so many years to go through training to get their license or bar exams or whatever exams they need to take in order to uh, start, um, you know, uh, basically uh, working in their field. But no, not traders. Traders, what they do first is open the trading account. That's what they think they need to do first. And then you know what? I'm really going to start trading right now without any prior trading education. They just look at CNBC and, you know, kind of like take a method or two. Uh, or pick up something about support resistance because this is the most common thing, buy and support, sell on resistance. And then that's it. You know, this is it. I mean, that's what they, uh, that's way, that's what they do. Think about this. What if you go to, let's say you need some kind of uh, root canal and you go to the dentist and um, the dentist says, oh yeah, I'm going to give you a root canal. Uh, you don't like that dentist doesn't have any qualifications. He just opened his practice and he says, you know what? I opened my practice. I'm going to see if I like doing root canals because there's good money in it. And uh, if I really like it, I think I'm going to go to medical school. <laughs> like seriously, it's like that. Trading is like that as well. So some of the important parts of trading are really rarely discussed, like confidence, conviction, patience, mental toughness, discipline, education, and uh, preparation. You need to prepare every single day for the trading day. Yes, you need to go through your multiple time frames. Even if you're a day trader, I always start with the highest time frames. I do a top-down analysis from the monthly chart all, all the way to the one-minute chart. Yeah, you got to do it. Now there's this fade with AIs, right? I have lived through so many fades throughout my trading career. I cannot tell you. Trust me, that's not a shortcut. The signals to buy and sell, to buy and sell, to buy and sell. Even I am working with someone that uh, offered to, uh, you know, to basically build an algorithm for myself based on my methodology and i'm like there's no way here's the thing here's why it's not going to work because even if you get a buy signal or a sell signal you need to know where you're going to place your stop you need to manually position sides for that trade you need to actually view where the next resistance areas are or support areas are whether you're long or short to see where you're going to be um taking some profits or where the targets are. And again, taking profits, that's a different thing. How, what if you take profits too soon? If you don't know how to trade, you are literally condemned of doing that. I was doing that when I first started trading. I left a lot of money on the table until I learned how to manage my trade so I can uh, so I can stay in my trade longer. So these are a lot of, there are a lot of things that you need to consider before getting into anything like this. So. Get into trading only if you have a burning desire and how badly you really want it. I know there's money to be made in the market, but don't let you need to love what you're doing because if you don't like charting, if you don't like the trading community, then that's not a good job for you. Um, again, you need to spend some time for education because that is the foundation wherever you get it. I don't care. There's a lot of information that is available online as well. Uh, discipline on how to follow your trading plan because look everybody needs a trading plan I'm the first one to admit that I was three months into the uh, into my trading career like 20 plus years ago and I'm like I don't need a trading plan I got my trading education I already have three or four courses uh, but I didn't have a trading plan and everybody was telling me like you need a trading plan and I'm like no it's all up here like I've got this I know that I have to wait for a pullback. I know that I have to wait for a setup. I know that where my buy zone is. I know where my stop is. I know how to calculate the targets. I've got this. But when you go through a lot of setups, for example, when you trade gaps, it's going to be a little bit different than you, you know, uh, you look for buy setups. So you need really need to have, um, you know, a system that you need to implement. And that trading plan doesn't have to be complicated. Basically, what I'm saying here is that you can start with something like super simple, like 
look for a stock or an index that is pulling back, let's say, to the 20 simple moving average. And then once it pulls back to the 20 simple moving average, watch for a rotation and then determine the time frame where you would like to do that. Whether you want to do it on the two minute, whether you want to do it on the five minute, whatever time frame, you know, seem is in sync with you, with your personality, with your trading, uh, et cetera. And then look for targets to establish into prior highs. Look to establish targets into, let's say, if it's going against the trend, into, let's say, into a moving average. Um, so have a simple trading plan that is going to show you also the money that you're going to be risking. Because uh, let me tell you, I, I have a lot of friends that are uh, brokers. And when we get together, they're sharing the horror stories from newbie traders. And there are so many traders that are blowing up their accounts because they risk 10%, 20%, 50%, 70% on one single trade. That's right. And that's why they blow up their accounts. They blow up their accounts. If you have a really small account, let's say, $10,000 because you need a you know quite a bit of money uh to actually make money in the market realistically to make a living. You can't make a living off $5,000. You can't. So news flash, you can't do that. You could barely make some money if you have a 25 to $30,000 account and you have to be very careful. You have to be careful to grow that account. Okay? So you got to be very realistic when you're approaching trading. If you need access to capital, there are a bunch of prop trading firms out there that can actually sponsor you and provide you with the capital. You just prove that you can trade and they're going to be giving you, uh, giving you the capital. So I recommend you go that route. But in, in this case, you have access to $100,000 to $300,000. That is the kind of amount of money that where you can actually make a killing into the market. And it gives you a better position size. Because let's face it, if you're a futures trader, opening an account with $5,000, your risk per trade, if you're using 1%, for example, I'm using 1% for my account, uh, you're going to be risking only $50. You're going to skip a lot of trades because within this volatility, you're going to have a lot of trades that are not going to fit your plan. You can't position size for it. So once you allocate your risk per trade, then you need to position size. We're going to get into that a little bit later to show you uh, how it's done. Hope we have the time. All right. So what do I trade? I specialize in day trading futures right now for accounting purposes, for tax purposes. So what do I trade? I trade the Dow, the S&P, NASDAQ, and Russell. These are my go-to. These are my money makers. And you, if you go through my performance, you're going to see that these four guys right here are my employees. Why? I send them to work every single day and I, they need to show me where I need to get my money into, whether in the Dow, the S&P, NASDAQ, or Russell, in order to get the best setup, I have a selection criteria um, in uh, within uh, this system that shows me the relative strength, the relative weakness, and shows me what I need to trade because the chart needs to show you what you need to trade. The rest right here, the rest of the panel are commodities, uh, bonds as well. You can see the bonds right here. I use them for swing trading purposes. The reality is that the commodity market has been an, under a lot of pressure lately. And to be very honest, I have not been swing trading the commodity market. I allocated my money into stock swing trading. I'm trading NVIDIA. I'm trading Microsoft. I'm trading AMD. I'm trading Micron. I'm trading Google. Um, I'm trading Microsoft. So I'm trading anything under the sun then putting my money into commodities. So you don't have to be stubborn and say, hey, I'm a, uh, I'm a futures trader. I'm just going to stick with futures. No, you just I just use these four charts right here just to generate my income. You saw the performance that I have, right? So trading is a rule-based system and you need to understand that it is a rule-based system. Just like I said, that's why you need to have that trading plan saying, okay, how many trades should I trade in a day? Three or four? Uh, but that doesn't mean that if you stop on a trade and if the market is not environment and if you don't see the setup, if you don't have the setup, of course, you don't have the trade, you should be risking your next R. So I typically allocate about four R's. So I give myself four bullets into the market every single day. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to take the four trades every single day. Uh, typically, I look for that one trade and done and I'm done. Um, 
finding high S trades is all about knowing how to compare charts, knowing synchronicity, knowing divergency, knowing how to look under underlying indices to see what's uh, the power to see what power players are, in, which power players are influencing the market and which not. See the leaders and laggers because the indices are just going to follow. You have to wait for a setup. I cannot emphasize how important this is to wait for the setup. You have a setup, you have a trade, you don't have a setup, you don't have a trade. You're exposing yourself to 99.9% .9 risk on that trade and actually the possibility of losing in that trade. I don't even take a trade if I have a 50-50 shot. So I have 50% chances of making money, but also have 50% chances of losing money. So I have a, let's say, a, a checklist and my checklist needs to be like, OK, is it in the trend that I'm going to look for a pullback? Is it in, a, let's say, is it pulling back into a confluence area or not? Is it doing this or that? So I need to have all my lists checked. And I need to make sure that more than 75 to 80 percent of my list is checked, because if there are only 50 percent of the elements on my list that are not checked, uh, then I'm not going to be taking the trade. So that is what it means when you're waiting for the setup. Fine and precise execution. I don't wing it. It's not like, oh, I'm just going to get a little bit here. I'm going to add there. I'm going to buy support. This is a support area is really wide. So I could buy it. Uh, you know, I could buy it anywhere. No, my ex entries and exits are laser sharp. So, for example, if I want to get into, I don't know, let's say into NASDAQ, I get it at 17.359. So that is my entry. I don't wing it, right? So I look at the precise trigger points. So there are triggers in the market that predict possible continuation or rejection of price. And of course, you need to have re really strong management skills. Other, with, other than that, you're going to leave a lot of money on the table. So for example, if you want to stay in the trade longer, you have two options. If you are trading just with one contract or with one lot, and if you don't want to scale out, or if you're trading in futures with one contract, you cannot scale out because you cannot break that contract into a gazillion pieces. But if you're trading with one full size contract, for example, either full size or micro, you cannot take partial profits into certain targets. So therefore, you're uh, you have to hold on to the trade until um, you know you juice up all the profits that are available within that chart. So you need to have really good management skills uh, when you do that. Of course, if you're trading with multiple size, multiple contracts, you need to say, hey, at target one, I'm going to scale, let's say, half or a quarter. And then at target two, I'm going to scale another quarter. And then I'm going to raise my stop to, let's say, target one. So in case the price action turns around, I'm not going to lose any money. OK, so there are a lot of things that go into this and go into a money management plan that, yes, it needs to be in your trading plan, because once it's in your trading plan, it's just a sheet of paper that is going to be in front of your computer uh, and on, on the desk right in front of your uh, trading computer. Then you're going to read it every single morning. You take a break, you go back, then you read it again before you want to push the buy button, because that reinforces the size that you need to take, the position size that you need to do, the areas where you need to buy how you need to manage and so on and so forth. And of course you need mental toughness because a lot of traders, after they have a loss, they go like, they go crying or they go like, oh my God, trading doesn't work. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm not going to be in that trading room because it had one losing trade in a month. It's like, I mean, you have to have mental toughness and also take responsibility for your own trading. So if you want to get started in the futures market, um, of course, you guys know that you don't need a lot of capital. You can open an account $5,000, but that's not going to get you very far. Can you open an account? Yes, but that you're not going to get very far. Like I said, the risk per trade that you're going to be allocated for that $5,000 account is going to be $50. Or if you want to lose, if you want to risk 2%, you're going to be risking to, uh, uh, if you want to risk 2%, then you're going to be risking $100. Okay. So that's a little bit, I, I'm not a big fan. Uh, of 2%, not unless you're an extraordinary trader that has a stellar track record, just like I do. And then if you, uh, you guys know that if you want to trade stocks, you need to have at least $25,000 in your account. And then basically you need to have a little bit more. You need to have $30,000 in your account because if you open an account with $25,000 and you lose a penny, your day trading status is out the door because of the pattern uh, trader rule that uh, the stock market has. 
So one of the biggest advantages, like I said, is still the futures market, but you still need to have a little bit more money. And if you think that, and like I said before, you know, you're not going to make a living if you have a $10,000 account, but you can open an account and you can work towards it. You could actually work even with $5,000. But remember, you need to trade on non-volatile days. Today is a very volatile day. What happens? Do you guys know what happens in volatile days? Anybody knows? What happens with the stops and volatile days? Yeah, they get taken out. However, there is a way, you know, to stay in a trade a little bit longer. And what is that? Using wider stops. Stops go below pivots. Stop goes above pivot, right? So when you're trading, regardless of the time frame that you're looking, your stops are always going to be below pivots or above pivots, whether you're trading the one minute or whether you're trading the 15 minute or one hour. Uh, and that is going to keep you in the trade a little bit longer. So yes, in volatile market conditions, the stops are going to be really wide. You're going to be looking at the Dow, probably 80 point stop. You're going to look at NASDAQ, probably 30 to 50 or sometimes even 70 point stop. And if you have that small account, you're going to find out that you cannot even position size, even if you uh, go into micros. Uh, so let's talk about the trading advantage between futures and stocks. So let's say a trader wants to trade right now the queues. And I was sold on this. OK, sold on this. So if you want to trade the queues, let's say hypothetically they're priced at 365, you need about $14,000 in buying power to get 100 shares. And if the price goes up 50 cents, then you make $50, which is good, right? Uh, you're making money. I mean, green is green. You can't you can't deny that. But if the trader wants to buy, let's say, a mini NASDAQ, let's say they're priced right now at 17000 you need about $17,000 to buy one contract because of the 2020 pandemic volatility. That is when it all started. That is when this crazy volatility started, right? And it actually started in 2019, but 2020 got really bad. And then if the price goes up 50 points and regularly you're going to see NASDAQ fluctuate a lot, even more than 50 points, then you'll profit about $1,000 because each point is about $20. Now, let's take it to charts, right? This is a classic buy setup, and we did this experiment last year into, the, um, into one of the coaching sessions that we had, and we said, you know what? We're going to buy. There was a very powerful uh, trend going on, and we wanted to uh, initiate a trade. We didn't really have the perfect setup, but we got in here. You guys can see it. It is a buy setup at 306.63. And we placed our stop just below the pivot here. So this is what we do. We position sized in. We actually didn't position size in here because we took it with 100 shares because it was equivalent uh, to the 15,483 buying power in the event that we, uh, effect that we needed in order to buy 100 shares. So this is 100 shares, guys. This is 100 shares with $15,000. And we said, we're going to leave it into the close because we had very powerful momentum and we had uh, a possibility of continuing power surging into the close. $300, $303 into the close. That's pretty good, right? Let me show you NASDAQ. Same strategy. Stop goes under here. This is the buy setup. Uh, one contract because we wanted to match the buying power effect from the prior, from the queues, right? So we use $17,000 we bought, we bought one contract. You could see the return right here into the close. So this trade generated with the same risk. The stop is right here. This is the entry, right? So risk is the same. The setup is the same, right? So $2,400 in um, NASDAQ and we have in the queues $300. I don't know about you guys, but I love capital efficiency. And not only that, but for the time that is staying to the market, I like to maximize my gains. This is 10x right here and then we have micros so remember there are traders that have smaller uh account sizes and it's fine it's fine i basically had a smaller account size as well when i started trading and once you get started and when you learn how to trade you just chunk it you just literally chunk that you know chunk those profits into your uh, trading account beef it up and that's how you start growing your account into a uh into um, let's say into such a point where you don't need to grow your account size anymore. All right. So here is the micros, uh, $1,700 in buying power, same setup. This is the entry. This is the stop. And with one contract, $246. How about you guys? But do you see the difference here? Buying power in effect, $1,700. And if you look over here, uh, if you're trading the queues to pretty 
much match the same returns of $50,000, right? Buying power. So basically you're 10Xing everything here, right? So take a look at the spies, right? Same setup. We took these trades, guys. We took these trades simultaneously. So this is the buy setup right here. This is the, the stop. The pattern remains the same. Look at the buying power. We're actually narrowing down on the buying power. By the way, here, the buying power is $20,000 to buy 100 shares of the spies, which delivered $262, which is fine, right? Which is fine. How many of you guys in here have never traded futures before? It's time to take a look, at least, right? Okay, by the way, this is the mini &E SMP. We were already in the trade. We were already in this trade, okay? Uh, for, uh, uh, you know, prior, in the prior days, like we had some uh, built up position that we're building up. But for this example, I wanted to show you the results. And this is only per contract right here. Uh, the buying power in event, you divide this by four. So it's about, let's say, $11,000. Uh, so that is nothing compared to this, right? You need $20,000 in buying power to make $200. Here, you basically needed about $12,000 to make uh, to make uh, uh, $3,675. And here is the smaller account version, $1,100 in buying power with one contract, same setup, deliver $127. And I'm going to answer all the questions, Okay for you guys at the end. So uh, basically with futures, you have the time flexibility. And as you're going into the turbulent election cycle, as you're going into this year, you may want to have a good handle on your um, on your trades, right? So what I do love about the futures market is that you have the hands-on risk, right? So what does that mean? You have access to your cash. You have access to managing your positions for 24 hours. The market doesn't close at four o'clock. The market is, you know, basically continuous for almost close to 24 hours. It's not 24 hours, but close to 24 hours. And bottom line is that geopolitical events do not wait for for the market to open. Events just happen. Think about earnings season for a moment, right? Think about earnings season for a moment. Think how awesome it is that in the overnight trading session, if you have, uh, you know, like we had earnings from Netflix and you guys know what Netflix did, right? I was trading Netflix. I held Netflix for earnings. So I made a gazillion profit on Netflix, but I wanted to take advantage of NASDAQ as well. So what did I do? I stopped for an entry opportunity around 9 p.m. and I got in. 9 p.m. and I got in. The next day, NASDAQ soared even higher and higher and higher. So you could take advantage of earning through this. Now let's get nitty gritty about um, um, about time frames. All right, uh, there's Jcast asking if you lose a hundred, how much is that? What is that? A hundred? Uh, you you mean a hundred points? And in what? Uh, and uh, I don't know. I don't know what you mean. Anyways, just leave me some comments right here and uh, let me know what you're thinking and the index that you're thinking because it's different if you lose 100 NES 100 points in ES is different than you lose 100 in Nasdaq is different than you lose 100 in Russell because they all have different price points one point in ES is $50 one point in Russell is $50 one point in uh YM is Five dollars, so you're going to lose much less if you're you're only going to lose five hundred dollars, for example, like on one hundred points. And one hundred points is different in Nasdaq because one point in Nasdaq is uh, twenty dollars. Okay, so let me know. All right, so I hope I answer your question by that, and you can multiply it with a hundred and find out what it is. All right, so time frames for successful patterns. How many of you guys in here don't want to waste your time and money and just focus on chart time frames that are really delivering? Of course, anytime. And if you have any further questions, shoot us an email at info at tradeoutloud.com. More than happy to answer all your questions. All right, so how many of you guys are sitting in front of the computer and you go like, oh, I, I wonder what time frame do I need to trade right now? I wonder what time frame, like what is, this is the one question that I get a lot. What is your favorite time frame? It's like, I don't have a favorite time frame. I look at the time frame that is providing me the entry, but there is a system. 
So for example, if I'm trading the open, I'm using the one minute and the two minute charts. The one minute and the, I focus on setups that are developing on the one minute and two minutes. So that is from 9.30 till 10 o'clock. From 10 o'clock, I only focus on the five minute. And I focus from 10 o'clock to 11.30. During doldrum, so right now we're into doldrum period, I'm focusing on the 15 minute time frame because moves are going to be a little bit wider. Uh, traders are taking their lunch breaks. A lot of them are closing positions or they're enabling wider stops because of the volatility. And if you want to stay in the trade a little bit longer, use the 15 minute. I'm not saying to trade during doldrums because I don't trade doldrums. I used to for years. <laughs> I'm not doing it anymore. And then go back to the five minute between 2 and 4 p.m. In the Asian and London session, so if you're trading overnight, you have a full-time job, you want to trade overnight, what I highly suggest is focus on the four-hour charts, not even on the one hour. You don't want to waste your time and money. Just focus on the four-hour. And if you're a day trader that is trading the London session, then five to 15 minutes. So Asia, four-hour charts, London and Asian, uh, L London session, five and 15-minute charts. Here's the trading plan for you, ready-made. So what do you need to do? What do you need to focus on? Focus on the market timing because the market is going to move like in segments, right? I, like I said earlier, it's going to move from 9.30, 9.30 opens. It's going to move from 9.30 to 10 o'clock, from 10 o'clock to 10.30. Boom, boom, boom. Time frames that you need to use. We just discussed them. Patterns that you need to focus on. Guys, focus on simple patterns. I was mentioning a trading plan earlier. Try to incorporate a pullback buy or a pullback sell, breakout or breakdown. These are the most common. You're going to be using the buy pattern and the sell pattern in literally 95% of your trading career. And then breakouts and breakdowns, again, you're going to be used very, very often. The rest of the strategies are literally really not as important. OK, so leave them on the back burner. Become a specialist in a buy or a sell in a breakout or breakdown. You don't need a gazillion strategies in order to make money into the market. Execution times, 9.35, 9.45, 10 o'clock, 10.30. These are the times that where you should be looking for these pullback buys or pullback sells. Again, and trade with the trend. Also, don't forget to measure your entry. This is the ESTRP. Entries, stops, targets, risk, and position sizing, these are the most important elements of trading. Is it easy to succeed in trading? If you have the right approach to trading and the right trading education, it's not. It's actually a walk in the park. Traders have the tendency to overcomplicate their trading. You need the right mindset. You need the right strategies. And like I said, don't use gazillion strategies. One, perfect and one. Have the proper mindset. Remember, a losing trade should not be devastating if you have the proper risk size and if you know what you did wrong with that trade. Have experience, so be in front of the market every single day, study charts. Listen, if you take one chart a day, one chart, and if you analyze top to bottom, multiple time frames, try to back test on that specific chart, uh, every single day for a year, at the end of the year, you would have 250 charts analyzed, printed out, make notes, uh, write what worked, write what didn't work. And that is how you develop your own system as well. This is a morning hybrid Elliott wave plus timing. This is pr proprietary. I developed this system because I've noticed that the market moved in these segments. Notice this morning. The market shot up from 9.30 to 9.45, for example, in the Dow, right? Dow shut up uh, in the first 15 minutes. And then after the 15 minutes, it started to pull back, right? And it held the low. It held the 10 a.m. low for some time. But typically what the market does is shoots up from 9.30 to 10 o'clock. There was something off when the market topped at 9.45. That was a sign. 
right? The, there is going to be some heavy turbulence. So the market opened 9.30, went, uh, uh, market opens at eight, uh, at 9.30, goes to 10 o'clock, it pulls back and then it rotates and go back, uh, goes back up. Why is this important here? Why is it important to know these times and these sequ sequences? Because when you have a trade from 9.30 to 10 o'clock, you're going to have a quick swing, a, a quick scalp trade that is going to be and where you're going to be focusing on one minute and the two minute charts, period. So the duration of the trade is going to be probably five minutes, around five minutes. So super quick, in and out, boom. Now, if the trade develops around 1030, you're waiting for a pullback. 10 o'clock is the major reversal time in the market. You're waiting for a pullback. You're waiting for that buy setup to happen here. So what happens is that you're going to have a much longer time to to hold your trade. So this is going to be a trend trade. It's not going to be a scalp. It's going to be a trend trade. This trade has a life, it has a really long life, really long life. So here it had for about five minutes, around five minutes, here, five, let's say five to 10 minutes. Here you have the potential to stay in the trade for about 45 minutes to an hour. Okay. So if trading was easy as reading a book, buying some indicators, everybody would do it. Right. So if you guys are ready to trade an institutional grade trading system, and uh, if you um, are ready to give away stress, not feel stress, no precise buy and sell zones, um, know how to manage the trade and learn how to manage the trade, have the confidence to stay in the trade, uh, have really hot patterns and setups that you're going to be stocking, know where to place the stop so you don't get dinged out by volatility, know how to position size, read into trading psychology each day, and basically how to put the puzzle together. We do this every single day in our trading room. If you want to make six to, six, six to seven figure income, you need to take decisions. You need to follow someone that has a proven track record that shows you how much money they made. Show me the proof. That's why I'm all, always about showing my performance and showing how much money I make in the room and with everybody. Be wired for success mentally. Follow that person long enough to steal the secrets and develop your own. So the future trading room is for you if right now you're losing money in the market, you don't have your mojo on. If you do not want to be glued to your computer all day, like I do, I don't. Uh, trade the power hour like a pro. I focus on the first hour of trading. Do not have a process that, if you don't have a process that eliminates emotions and stress, this room is for you. If you lack confidence in trading, you have no idea what you're doing, this is the room for you. If you don't know where to go, long or short with confidence, you go like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna short here. Oh my God, I'm gonna long here. I'm gonna go short, long, long, short. Okay, if you don't know, this is the room for you. If you don't know how to recognize setups, this is the room for you because we trade 100% technical. Uh, not having the proper trading discipline, you go like, oh my gosh, I just got to get in the trade or uh, I, I just got out. Have the discipline, you only have to follow me. And bottom line is that when you join the trading room, just don't trade on your own. If you want to trade on your own, just and trade outside of the trading room hours, take your own trades, do it in a simulated account until you learn how it's done. Because I work really hard every single day for about an hour to find the best trading opportunities and to get into trades myself. And basically all the trades are designed for me. My number one goal in the trading room, basically, if you take it that way, is for me to make money right? is to make money. So my number one objective is to make money. So that's why I focus on making money for myself. And what I do is I share the same trades with my hundreds of traders. So if you want to implement skill, if you want to implement risk management, but you don't know how, you can learn from the way I trail. Because once I'm in a trade, I'm on the microphone constantly until I'm out of the trade. Because I don't call a trade and say, okay, Sayonara. See you later, guys. Bye-bye. Good luck with your trade. Hey, you know what? Here's the target. Good luck to you. No, I sit there because I'm trailing my own position and I trail it for everybody in there. And if you want to minimize your risk and maximize your gains and literally start growing your account, this is the room where you want to be. Uh, so what kind of trader do you want to be? Do you want to be a welfare trader, not successful, pinching profits, losing more than you're gaining? 
blaming others for your failures and losses. Oh, but you got me in this trade and I lost money. Why don't you take responsibility to learn how it's uh, how, learn how to trade? Or you want to be a millionaire mindset trader, successful trader that know what you're doing. We trade every single day with a structured approach. We trade live a system that is in sync with the power moves. Do you want to get those home runs? Do you want to get those power moves? Do you want to be more on the right side of the trade than the wrong side of the trade? I had only two losing days in the month of January and January was rough, okay? January was really rough. Uh, so if you want to play with the institution, the first two hours and uh, you know benefit from their strong momentum moves at specific times, at specific locations, at precise technical patterns, this room is for you. Literally our room overrides every single event news event artificial indicator earnings dark pool and by the way we don't trade news we trade the effects from news i don't trade option expiration days but i'm going to give you the guidance in case you want to do that and i'm going to show you exactly what you need to do and also what risk you need to apply so it's not devastating so it's not going to take from all the winnings that you have throughout the week also fomc i don't trade i don't trade fomc why should i be trading it okay it's a chop fest anyway all right, so if you guys are ready, you can join the Futures Trading Room. Uh, our trading room is from 9 o'clock to 11.30 every single day. I come on the mic around 9.15 to 9.20 because I do the prep work before I come on the mic. The room is still $299 a month. It's going to go to $500 a month really, really soon. And you can understand why. I'm putting a lot of time and a lot of effort in sharing my trades and I bring my A-game every single day. With the room, you have access to a Zoom room. Uh, and if you want to take a look and see what we have to offer, you can look at the performance portfolio at the very bottom of the page. But what we do is basically we perform the pre-market game plan. We have institutional trading levels that we focus on. It's 100% guided trading. So yeah, I'm going to hold you by the hand. Uh, we take between one and three trades every single day. We have exact parameters with entry stop targets. So you can position size for your risk level. It's not like, oh, I'm going to take this trade with one contract or I'm going to use standard two contracts. Here you go. That's a real doozy right there. Um, you're going to get these exact parameters, live trading for the live the trade, real-time response to all your questions, live screen share, lectures and mentoring until you get it, okay? Uh, and then you're going to have access. I'm going to show you here. Uh, oh, and one other thing is that uh, we do have uh, one day passes and five day passes. All right. So if you uh, say, you know what, I want to see what it's all about and I want to see your style, even though you could go on YouTube and you could see that we have uh, had uh, two open houses last year, which is very uncommon because I only uh, have one in August. Uh, but we had two open houses. The next one is going to be again in August. Uh, we have a one day pass for 25 bucks. This is not. Uh, renewable. So that means that uh, you're not going to get scammed into, oh, pay 20, uh, $25 and after a day you get charged for a month. And the same with a five day. This is five days. So you come in the room on Monday through Friday. And then uh, you have yearly passes and monthly passes with a yearly pass. And like I said, the prices are really going to go up. The one day pass is going to be $50 and the five day pass very soon is going to be $200 because we're increasing the price to $500 very, very soon. So if you take advantage of the yearly or the monthly, you're going to be grandfathered in with the room. And I know I have like one second left, David. Uh, with the room, we have access to the performance portfolio. We have access, we give you access to my personal portfolio here, risk management, where you get a risk size calculator. Okay, here we go. A risk size calculator that'll show you exactly how much you need to take the trade with. So if you guys are ready, hop on board I'll, and I'll see you in the room. Thanks so much, David.